All right, so in this tutorial, I would like to uh, talk about how to find the transition state of reactions. In this tutorial, we will look at an SN2 reaction uh, where the carbon uh, gets replaced by fluorine in a CH3X molecule. The main steps of this procedure uh, are outlined here. So the first thing we will do is we would guess the geometry of the transition state for this reaction. Then we would optimize this and finally we will verify that the geometry that we got uh, corresponds to the transition state. Uh, and if it would not work out then we will try a different guess and restart the whole process. Of course the first thing you have to do is to draw out our guess of the transition state and this is what mine looks like. So I have my uh, first reactant on the left side here and my incoming fluorine anion on the right side here and of course you will be like why does she have so many uh, bonds to carbon? That doesn't make sense but of course they're not real bonds they're just for me to position my atoms properly. The next tricky part is to uh, determine what should be the bond length between this incoming fluorine and the carbon uh, of the uh, big molecule here. For this, I first googled the normal bond length between carbon and fluorine, which is of interest for me. So it's 1.35 angstroms. However, because I know that this bond in my TS, right, geometry is not formed yet, then I can't put it on 1.3. This is way too short. So I will put it approximately at 2 and hope that it will be good enough. Uh, if you don't remember how to position uh, your atoms and change bond lengths, there are different tools for that in Avogadro. You either use this uh, bond-centric manipulate setting or you just select the atoms that you want to move and then you use this manipulate tool to move it around. All right? And you can also um, you know, measure the bond length by using this measuring tool and uh, it will displace the, the bond length in angstroms on the bottom of the screen. Once you got your guess right uh, or as close as you think it should be, then you um, generate the Gaussian input and then you have to open it in notepad because you need to add certain things. So first of all, uh, this is my, uh, my conditions. Uh, I noticed that I use one diffuse function in my basis set because we're dealing with anion of the fluorine. Then you'd notice that I added two parameters to my optimization uh, keyword, which is the TS for transition state and mod redone that allows me to freeze certain bonds. Of course, the bond that I would like to freeze is the carbon fluorine bond, and I want it to stay at the two angstroms that I just put it at. For this, I need to find the labels of my atoms. So I would check this label here on the left, and then uh, now that I can see that carbon is one, fluorine is six, after the coordinates of my, my molecules, after I leave one empty line and then I write one for the carbon, space six for the fluorine, space F for frozen bond. So then now Gaussian knows that it doesn't touch this bond and optimizes everything around it, but not this. All right. Now that I'm ready, I can run my calculation and this is the output that I get. Uh, so let's check if I got my convergence right. Alright, so everything converges properly, perfect. Let's look at um, the Avogadro of this output. And so this is what my optimized guess looks like. Seems fair. Alright, so now I will use uh, this geometry, so these coordinates, 
for the input of my verification step. And the verification step is simply a frequency calculation. Right, so this is my new input. I'll open it notepad to make sure everyone can see. Notice that I deleted the opt keyword and I left only the frequency keyword. You're not optimizing anything anymore. All right. And now I would run my calculation and I will obtain this output. What am I looking for? Why did I do the frequency calculation? I did the frequency calculation because I know that in if I get only one negative frequency, this is what I get. That means that the geometry that I obtain corresponds to first order saddle point. And first order saddle point is that transition state. Therefore, the geometry that I used, my guess was close enough and after being optimized, it represents fairly the transition state for this reaction. Yay! Let's see what it looks like in Avogadro. Alright, so this is my same input as before. And I would like to look at the frequencies. So I'll go extensions, vibrations. And now I will select my imaginary frequency and I will start the animation. So I'll show you the mouth a bit. So you see that this vibration corresponds to the reaction coordinate, and it should. The reaction coordinate indicates that these two molecules, uh, molecules, atoms break this bond, and these two atoms form a bond. So everything is exactly as it should. It's perfect. I can also check on the displaced force vectors, and now we have little arrows telling me where everybody's going. So because uh, this calculation was successful and my verification um, showed me that I found the real transition state of this reaction, I can stop. However, if I would get a uh, second or third order uh, saddle point, of course, I would need to restart the whole process with a better guess and hope that it will work. So, of course, you can see that this approach is a bit tedious if you have a bad idea of what the transition the geometry should look like, but if you sort of know, then it could it could work out pretty well. So this is it for this tutorial.